BuzzFeed published a beautiful, beautiful story. I'm, I'm being facetious. Where they allege that a, a fringe ultra right, right, World War II era uh, um, faction guy, if you know what I mean, starts with an N A Z I. Yes, I can't say these things on YouTube. Forgive me. I understand a lot of people don't like how I have to use, you know, this kind of like innuendo. I don't know if innuendo is the right word, but euphemisms for what these people are. But trust me when I say that I have done the algorithmic, like I've looked at it, the algorithm. Uh, I've looked at how certain videos are weighed. And when I say these words, strangely, just the word itself, viewership goes way down. It's a fact. But anyway, here's the point. BuzzFeed claims this dude was radicalized in part by Ben Shapiro. Interestingly, this might not be true. It's really, it's, it's, it's really strange. So here's what happens. BuzzFeed tweets this, and they say that this dude was reading like Identity Europa and Breitbart and stuff. But they also say that he told federal agents he was reading Ben Shapiro. Well, Mike Cernovich contests this. Mike Cernovich says that he actually read through his testimony, and it turns out, dude never said it. It actually came from, this is, this is according to Cernovich, so if you don't trust him, by all means, don't trust him. But he's got some screenshots. It might not be completely true. I don't, I don't I'm not going to sit here and act like Cernovich is a bastion of, of facts or anything, like, you know, take it for what it is. It's not coming from a news organization. But Cernovich is making the accusation that he's read through this stuff, and there's a much bigger story that BuzzFeed skipped out on. Basically, according to Mike, in the transcripts, it turns out there is a foreign agent funding and radicalizing the student in America, and BuzzFeed apparently skipped over that part of the story and chose to smear Ben Shapiro instead. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the story from BuzzFeed. Before we get started, though, go to timcast.com slash donate. If you'd like to support my work, there's a monthly donation option, cryptocurrency options, a physical address, or you can just like, comment, and share because engagement really helps the video. So let's, 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 first, I'll do this for, for, for Ben's sake. Before reading the, the hit piece from BuzzFeed, Ben tweeted in response, yes, if there's one thing I'm known for as one of the most prominent Orthodox Jews, targets of the alt-right and critics of the alt-right, it's directing... N-A-Z-I-S, to attack synagogues. What garbage. So here's the thing. In the actual BuzzFeed article, it doesn't actually make the same claim as the, uh, uh, as the tweet does. The tweet makes the claim that this guy said it was Ben Shapiro. Hmm, interesting that's not in the, it's, that's not in the story. And apparently it would seem that to a certain extent, I can confirm some of what Cernovich is saying is true because the story makes reference to a statement filed by a private lawyer, meaning... It seems like BuzzFeed had all the evidence in front of them and chose whoever tweeted this out. Did it wrong? Did it wrong? They, BuzzFeed chose to smear Ben Shapiro. So here's the story. This guy apparently, you know, vandalized a synagogue or something, and he's in serious trouble. They talk about how, you know, he's radicalized on the internet, things like this. I don't want to read too much into the story, but the only point at which they actually reference Ben Shapiro, comes from, it's, it's a quote from his girlfriend. So his girlfriend said that, according to Nolan, uh, I'm sorry, this is from the lawyer, apparently. According to Nolan, she began with right-wing at mainstream views, such as those presented on Fox News. She then moved on to the writing by Ben Shapiro and articles on Breitbart News, which bridged the gap into etc., etc., etc. So BuzzFeed doesn't actually say the same thing. So it's, it does seem like a total smear. Here's the interesting thing. The Daily Caller wrote up the criticism. This is, I find this fascinating. BuzzFeed News faces blowback for claim that Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro radicalized uh, the, the neo NAZI guy. Here's the thing. One of the critics is actually a writer from, for Vox, Vox of all places, who said, a reminder that these types trying to get a lesser sentence might lie about he was, how he was radicalized as these people I'll just say, are prone to do. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely paraphrasing what she said because YouTube is going to punish me if I talk too much about certain issues. But if a writer from Vox can, can point out that these people are lying scumbags, why would BuzzFeed uncritically report this nonsense smearing Ben Shapiro? So here's what I got from it. It's actually really funny. I'm going to say this controversial opinion. I believe it is, it is entirely likely and true that this guy, this vandal, fringe far-right vandal, was radicalized thanks in part to Ben Shapiro. Yes, but not in the way most people think. When I read the story from BuzzFeed News, 
where they said reading Ben Shapiro radicalized him. I didn't immediately assume the guy agreed with Ben Shapiro. I immediately assumed he hated Ben Shapiro. Okay, you see what I'm saying? The Anti-Defamation League said that Ben Shapiro was the number one target of, anti- of anti-Semitism for, uh, among journalists. So we know these people don't like him. What that says to me is the dude was reading Ben Shapiro and getting angry and disagreed with him. And that's what made, like, it radicalized him. The fact that Ben Shapiro was right about these things and this guy didn't like it and didn't agree and, and hated Ben Shapiro. It's really interesting that the immediate assumption everyone makes, right and left, is that if somebody reads Ben Shapiro and then goes nuts, it's that they like Ben Shapiro and agreed with him and that his ideas are somehow nuts. Instead of the, the alternative that when you, someone who read Ben Shapiro might be like, no, this can't be true. It's wrong. I refuse to believe it. And goes crazy. If these people hate Ben Shapiro so much, why would anyone assume anyone liked him? It's the weirdest damn thing. But let's talk about something really interesting that Mike brings up. Again, I've interviewed Cernovich a couple times. I'm not, uh, um, I'm not in a position to prove what he says is necessarily wrong or right. Uh, and I'm not going to dig through everything he's doing in fact checking. I just want to talk about what he's bringing up to make an interesting point. But I will stress he has, you know, done like, w- 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 you know, in, a, in the movie he made Hoaxed, in which I, I am actually in it. He talks about presenting a fun house mirror where he would claim like Hillary Clinton was sick. And that's because they claimed Donald Trump was sick. And he was basically reflecting back at the left what they were doing to the right. With that being said, sure, Mike has said a lot of things that are controversial, incorrect, you know, so take that with a grain of salt. I'm not, you know, uh, and I will stress too. The reason I'm saying this is because you're going to get all sorts of people, like there are people on the right who don't like, you know, Mike, there are people on the left who really don't like, they really, really don't like him. But it is true that Mike has broken some pretty big stories and with BuzzFeed. So he, he gave some documents to BuzzFeed. It got some congressmen, you know, forced him to resign, something like that. So I don't want to act like, you know, I know enough to say he's right or wrong, but I want to point out what he's saying. So I'll give you that caveat. He says, there is no evidence to indicate that Nolan Brewer ever read Ben Shapiro and a search history of his computer turns up uh, searches for World War II leader propaganda, if you know what I mean. The full case file for Nolan Brewer, who BuzzFeed is trying to tie to Ben Shapiro, is full of anti-Semitism. I would, he said, he, would, he said, I would upload case files, but would probably get banned. Anyhow, total smear job of Shapiro by, by BuzzFeed here. Nolan Brewer was steered into committing, uh, into doing this vandalism by someone located in Romania and Ukraine, a hotbed of, of fringe far right. Brewer was a hardcore anti-Semite, did not mention Ben Shapiro in his interview with agents, and that detail was added in a sentencing memo by his lawyer. <clears throat> The sentencing memo filed by a private attorney mentions Ben Shapiro, the defendant's lawyer, blamed the girlfriend for radicalizing him. But BuzzFeed said Shapiro was mentioned to federal federal agents. That's not the case. And Mike highlights this tweet where they say he told federal agents that his road to to radicalization included Ben Shapiro. Not true. He says, do I care that BuzzFeed smeared Ben Shapiro by wrongly tying him to anti-Semitic crime? Of course not. He says, I find it funny given that Ben plays a hall monitor. But the truth matters. And BuzzFeed got the story wrong. Shapiro is innocent here. P.S. If BuzzFeed and the left want to blame Ben Shapiro for the, 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 the crime because a lawyer claimed his client's girlfriend read Shapiro once, let's talk about the SPLC. But let's not talk. I don't want to talk about the SPLC. I want to talk about the interesting thing that, that Mike brings up. He says the real bo- the, the BuzzFeed ben Shapiro bombshell. The guy's girlfriend read Shapiro once, according to a lawyer, not a federal agent. In the case of the SPLC, the, the guy said that he read SPLC. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to skip over that stuff. Far more interesting than tying Ben Shapiro to this guy, the attacker had a handler in Ukraine or Romania. It's not completely clear. Foreign assets are in, a, are in Discord chats radicalizing American youth. But BuzzFeed chooses to smear Shapiro instead of focusing on this. He then links to these documents who talks about a guy in Europe. And he was telling us to do this, do that, try a park, etc., etc. He lives in Romania. He's from Romania. So this is really interesting because it's not just, um, it wasn't just BuzzFeed. What we see from this, when BuzzFeed chooses to smear Ben Shapiro, instead of actually going for the part of the story, foreign, foreign individuals targeting American youth, which is, is really, really crazy, Splinter then runs with it. And here we have Synagogue Vandal says he was radicalized by Ben Shapiro. There you go. That's the cycle of fake news laundering. Well, that's not even what is said in the BuzzFeed article. Now, BuzzFeed did tweet it, but what happens? This writer, Sophie, Sophie Weiner, that's actually what it says, Sophie Weiner, 
Um, a writer for Splinter, full disclosure, I used to work for Fusion, which is changed its name to Splinter. Saw the tweet, and that was good enough. And they say, according to BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed didn't say that. BuzzFeed was quoting somebody, talking about his girlfriend, and that was just in their tweet. Fake news travels halfway around the world before the truth straps on its boots. But you know what? None of this matters. None of it matters at all. Look, it it is really interesting how fake news travels like this, and they're smearing Ben Shapiro. Don't get me wrong, that is important. But I'd like to stress, if you believe that this guy posting these symbols and spray painting them was radicalized by one of the most prominent Orthodox Jews in the country, maybe the world, I have got a bridge to sell you. Good job, BuzzFeed. Good job of fact-checking. Because the story is insane from the get-go. Because even if the person actually said this, why the hell would you believe it? Do your jobs, journalists. Critic, approach this stuff critically and challenge this stuff. My God. I got a couple more stories coming up for you in a few minutes. I will see you in the next segment.